American freelance journalist Peter Theo Curtis, held hostage for nearly two years by the terror group Al Nusra in Syria, has been released. With me, terrorism analyst Eric Stakelback, and from In Defense of Christians, Jordan Allot, who recently was in Syria. Good evening, gentlemen. Eric, your reaction to the American hostage freed in Syria today? Well, Judge, I think it's great news, number one. But number two, look, ISIS still had, this, he was released by the Al Nusra Front, the Al Qaeda link group, but what ISIS still has. What is the difference, has... Eric, between, you, you make the distinction, the Al Nusra yeah. Front and ISIS? Yeah, well, Judge, look, the Al Nusra Front still pledges allegiance to Al Qaeda Central in Pakistan. They are an Al Qaeda branch. They're basically Al Qaeda in Syria, whereas ISIS broke away from al-Qaeda. There's some major differences there. ISIS chose to go their own way. There's some bad blood between ISIS and al-Qaeda. And the al-Nusra Front and ISIS have even fought each other in Syria. Now, in the future, who knows, Judge, they may consolidate because one of my concerns is ISIS is such a steamroller, a runaway train here. I'm concerned that maybe some al-Qaeda affiliates will get with the strong horse and link up with ISIS. Or maybe, as you say, uh, are they sworn enemies? Or would they fight each other? They have fought each other in Syria. Um, and there has been tension between ISIS. Al Qaeda Central said to ISIS, look, you're too extreme for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Even al-Qaeda's leader, Ayman al-Zawahiri, said ISIS's tactics, crucifixions, beheadings, oh. we've seen it all, Judge, is too much even for Zawahiri because it alienates Muslims. Jordan, you were recently in Syria. What are the conditions like for Americans who were taken as hostages? Well, it's very difficult to get into Syria. I had the opportunity to travel across the Turkish border by foot with, with a colleague uh, in defense of Christians, Director Andrew Doran. And, we, we had a lot of challenges. We had to worry about the Turkish border police that tend to shoot before they ask questions. There are kidnappers there because, as you know, as we all know, uh, you know, the life of an American is, is, very, is worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, al-Nusra, they, they control most of the border between Turkey and Syria, so it's very difficult to get in. And this would have been the same route, the same journey um, that Foley took, Mr. Foley took. Um, but it, it's very difficult. And... Uh, the Christians that we met with there, we actually met with a lot of Christians who had come to defend their homeland from Europe. So their ancestors were from Syria and Iraq, and they had come from Europe to, to defend their brother and sister Christians, which was very interesting because we've only heard of Muslims doing that, but Christians are doing that as well. Well, well, that's good to hear, although, you know, when you think about uh, towns like Mosul in Iraq, uh, you know, what, 500,000, uh, a million leaving? But, but let me sp speak for a minute about this guy, Mohammed Brown. He's an American. Uh, Eric, he's in jail, suspected of killing four people in his own jihad, uh, and he says he's doing it as uh, a retaliation for what the United States is doing. Is ISIS here? Uh, you know, Judge, that's a great question. We've had Rick, Governor Rick Perry, we've had uh, Congressman Ted Poe over the past week out of Texas say that perhaps ISIS has crossed the southern border. I think there's no doubt that we have ISIS sympathizers in the United States right now. The potential is here. And when with Mr. Brown, who you just talked about, Judge, I think of Fort Hood. I think of these lone wolf jihadis. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to walk into a shopping mall, yell Allahu Akbar, and start firing. I think there's real potential for that right now in the United States. Europe, big time, Judge. When, We've had when you thousands. Say that, Eric, when you say that the Governor Perry and, and others are suggesting that, that they're already here coming through the border, what evidence is there to support that? You know, Judge, you'd have to ask them. Okay, but they're I will. Coming out then let me go to Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, is ISIS betting that videos like the beheading of James Foley will scare off journalists? Uh, will, I mean, what is their end goal here? Oh, definitely, definitely. They, they want to intimidate. And it, obviously it was planned. They wanted to intimidate journalists and others from coming. They, they want to, I guess, tell their own story. They, want, they don't want journalists from the West coming there and, uh, I guess, showing the reality of the brutality of, of ISIS and other groups. So um, we'll have to see whether we're intimidated by it or hopefully the West, Christians in general, all over the world, will instead be motivated to act on behalf of, of other Christians. And, Eric, you know, I, I was reading that there are uh, some of these terror groups that are doing the kidnapping or doing it for money, but when it comes to an American who's being held hostage, that it's not so much for money as it is for the ideological threat to the United States. D have you heard yeah. that? Yeah, Judge, absolutely. Look, uh, it sends a message 
to America. This is a declaration of war on America to behead an American, a U.S. citizen, on camera. This is a great propaganda coup for ISIS because, number one, it shows that they are on the cutting edge of this global jihad. It helps them gain new recruits. And one of the interesting things here, Judge, is kind of the blending of hip-hop culture with mm -hmm. jihad. Mm -hmm. That's a way ISIS is using social media to attract young Western Muslims. They're looked at as hip, as cool, if you can believe it, among some disaffected young Western Muslims. They are real pros on social media, much more than any terrorist group we've seen. Scary. All right, I, I've read about a jihadi cool or something. Jordan and Eric, yeah. thanks so much for being with us.